Good day, Grade Twelves. <laughs> Welcome to the next lesson in trigonometry. In this lesson, we're going to carry on with trigonometry. When I say carry on, we've been doing finance. I know that we've got done some trigonometry before this in this year, and now we're going to do some more trigonometry. But before we do that, I want to quickly run through how to enroll in the Grade Twelve uh, Mathematics class. So the first thing you need to do is go to your uh, web browser, whether it be Chrome or Edge or whatever you use and um, Firefox and I need you to type in www.toenable.org okay and you'll get onto this landing page and if you're a first time user and that's who I'm really targeting with this with this slideshow this first part of the slideshow you need to register so when you register you type in your first name your last name and you put in your email address Right, and then the next time you will just log in, you log in and you put in your email address and the password and you click log in. And you'll come up with this page here, which won't be quite so populated. You will have two subject, you'll have progress and results and to enable help online, but nothing else. So what you need to do is click the choose subject button and you'll come across a website which has got all the subjects that Turnable offers. But now we're talking about grade 12 maths. So you need to scroll down until you get to mathematics grade 12 and you can click on the mathematics grade 12 and then click enroll and it'll pop you back to this page. Grade 12, you're welcome to enroll in grade 10 and grade 11 as well, obviously. Um, I said that because a lot of times the work that's covered in the grade 12 classes builds on the stuff that you guys learned in grade 10 and 11. I don't know what it's like. Sometimes you forget or you're going through a rough patch or you weren't at school and you miss some work. OK, so feel free to enroll in both 10 and 11 or either or and then make sure that you can do all the work. OK, now the reason we want you to do this is because you can then go to the live assessments. So if there's a live assessment running for your class, then what you can do is there would be a little red button here that will say like one, like that 408, it'll say one. And then what you need to do is you click on it and you can go do the live assessment. Now, the reason I want to do that is let's say, for example, I run a live assessment on, well, we've just finished finance. So I could run a live assessment on the finance and then what will happen is that you guys can go and answer it. Now, the cool thing is that I don't get an exact result. In other words, I don't see, oh yes, um, Jenny from, uh, I don't know, a Jupiter got two right out of the 10 questions or that Johnny from Mars got all 10 questions right. All I get is a graph. OK, and my graph says, oh, look, most of the students got everything right, except that quite a few of them got question four wrong. OK, um, like, oh, most of them got almost everything right, but quite a few of them got question four wrong. So then what I'll do is I'll go to question four, see what that's about. And then I will set a lesson specifically teaching the content of question four to make sure you guys understand it. OK, that's the whole point of these lessons. OK, so then upcoming events. So this is where you'd click to get to this video, the live events, okay, the live session. So you click it. Oops, and then you get your other thread. And then what happens is you get a table like this, a page like this, right? And you obviously it depends on how many courses you have enrolled in as to how many events you'll see. But it's talking now about grade 12 maths and you'll see a view event and you click the view event button and you get a little pop up like this and you go to open live TV link and you click that to just and then you get a page that is this on it. OK, now I personally would open the feed in the new tab because it gives a bigger screen which makes it easier to see. But if you guys are happy with a smaller screen, then go for it. You click the join event. Now, listen, if you have sport at the time, if from five to five o'clock to six o'clock is a really bad time for you guys to be watching this because it's supper or it's your favorite soap opera or whatever. OK, you guys can watch a recording. You go through exactly the same steps, but then you watch a recording of it. Now, the only bad thing about watching a recording is that during the live shows, this message studio link works and that is another reason why I want you guys to enroll in the class because if you if that message studio button works then during the live show then you can message me and you can say hey Candice um, I really understand this now but I'm really struggling with this section so for example we've just done finance 
so you guys could come back and say to me, listen, great, but we really still are struggling with future value or present value, or we need more complicated timeline examples, then that's fine. Then what I will do is I will, okay, the trigonometry was a request from somebody. So what I will do is I will finish the trigonometry and then I'll go back and I'll say, right, some people requested some more complicated timeline questions in finance, uh, specifically with present value or future value formula or whatever for example and then we will do some lessons on that okay but note that this message studio link only works during live sessions so if you're watching a recording you cannot message me like that okay so let's move on to our trigonometry okay so we're going to go on to compound angle identities and we're going to do double angle identities and compound angle identities are important because you get given the formula, but they like to ask you to prove it. Okay, so we're going to go through it. There are very few um, theory parts to maths, okay? Um, okay, yes, there are the theorems in geometry, but when it comes to trig and when it comes to paper one, there are very few theory questions they can ask you, as in stuff that you can learn. And one of the things that you can learn is to derive these compound angle identities. And when I say learn, ideally it would be better if you understood how it worked than um, learning it purely by heart for the simple reason that it's very easy to learn something by heart and then forget halfway through an exam and have a panic attack and then you can't get it right. Okay, so we're going to go through this. So you are given the following formula. The cos of A minus B is cos cos plus sine A sine B. Okay, cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. The cos of A plus B is cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. You are also given that sine A plus B is sine A cos B plus sine B cos B. And finally that sine A minus B is equal to sine A cos B minus sine B cos B. Okay, so you're given all of them, but they like to give you this type of thing. Given that cos of A minus B is cos A cos B plus sine A sine B, they want to derive the formula of cos of A plus B plus B. Okay, so we're going to go through it step by step and make sure that you can do this. So you've got cos of A plus B. So what we're going to do is break that up. We're going to say, well, that's the same as when we've already got a formula for minus b, right? Cos of a minus b. So if we break this up and write this as cos of a minus minus b, because the minus times the minus is a plus, then it becomes a lot easier because then it becomes cos a cos of minus b plus sine a sine of minus b. And now you need to think about your cost diagram. Um, so what would be ideal is if you learnt that bit there, okay, that cos of A plus B can be rewritten as cos of A times A minus B. I mean, cos of A minus minus B. And then you just used your rules and your knowledge of the cos diagram to work it out. Okay, wouldn't that be better than trying to memorize everything? Okay, so if we do this, we've got cos A cos of minus B plus sine A sine of minus B, but cos of minus B is in this quadrant here, which means it becomes a positive. So you end up with cos of minus b is cos b because it's in the fourth quadrant but sine of minus b is minus b is over here and sine is negative in the fourth quadrant so that becomes minus sine b so you end up with cos a cos b minus sine a minus times sine b why because obviously this has become a positive but this one the way it worked was this bit here it became sine A times by minus sine B. And remember there was a plus here. So plus times the minus is a minus. So that's where that minus comes from. And there you go. So now we've derived the formula for cos of A plus B. It's cos A cos B, change of sign, sine A sine B. Okay, right. Similarly, again, you're given cos of A minus B is equal to cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. They ask you to write the formula of sine of A minus B. Now, again, there's a trick, and the trick is this, to remember that these are co-ratios, that sine of theta is the same as cos of 90 minus theta. 
And once you've got that, you're pretty cool because then you can sort it out again because what we're going to do is we're going to break this up. So we're going to say, well, this is cos of 90 minus A plus B. Okay. So we're going to multiply this out. So we get 90 minus A minus B. Because obviously, if we broke it, if we went for this, do you agree we'd end up with cos of 90 cos of A minus B plus sine of 90 sine of A plus A minus B again. So it doesn't really help us at all. Do you agree? So we need to break it up into a format which is going to separate out the A's and B from each other. We want to break them up. So therefore, we now write that that is equal to cos of 90 minus A minus minus B. Okay, in other words, we separate this out to be 90 minus A. And then remember, we can, just like we did before, we write the plus B as minus minus B. So now we've got this format, okay? So now we can write this as cos of 90 minus A, cos of minus B, plus sine of 90 minus A, sine of minus B. And again, we need our cost diagram, all, all stations to Cape Town. Minus B is again down here. That's B. So that becomes Okay, so you've got to remember a couple of things. Cos of minus B is cos B again, and sine of minus B is going to be minus sine B, okay? Also, you need to remember your co-ratios. The cos of 90 minus theta is sine theta, and sine of 90 minus theta equals cos theta because they are co-ratios. So therefore, we get cos of 90 minus A is sine A, cos of minus B becomes cos B, Sine of 90 minus A is just cos of A because it's a co-ratio. And sine of minus B is sine B. So therefore, we've derived the formula that sine of A minus B is equal to sine A cos B minus cos A sine B. Okay. Right. Finally, they can ask us to derive the formula of sine of A plus B. So again, we can say that this is the same co-ratio, cos of 90 minus A plus B, and we again break it up into cos of 90 minus A minus B, which is again cos of, and how did we do that? We just multiplied the through. So you can see the difference if you go back, watch here. Yeah, we had minus times a minus was a plus, which meant we had to do that minus times a minus thing, okay, which is why we ended up with a negative B there and the negative B there. Whereas now, when we multiply this bracket, it becomes minus A minus B. So when we separate it out, it's already minus B. So it's already in that format. How cool is that? So then it becomes cos of 90 minus a cos b plus sine of 90 minus a sine b and all you need to remember is that these are co-ratios so it ends up with sine of a cos b plus cos of a sine b okay so guys you need to go and practice those seriously you need to practice 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 make sure you can do them they love asking them and they're nice they're like five marks at least okay so now let us use our, co our compound angles and our double angles to work this out, okay? So it says prove that sine 75 is root 2 multiplied by root 3 plus 1 all over 4, and it says without the using a calculator. Okay, so as soon as I see something like that, and it says without the using a calculator, I'm thinking my special angles and my special triangles. So I can draw out my special triangles and I've got 45, 45, 90, 1, 1, root 2. And this year is 60, 30, 2, 1, root 3. Okay, so as soon as I see something without using a calculator and I've got root 2s and root 3s there, I'm thinking special angles. Which means, do you agree, that I can change sine 75 to be sine of 45 plus 30? Ah, so do you see that that then we are using our compound angles and we're using our special triangles. So now we use our rule, which we have it's on our formula sheet. We say that this is 
sine 45 cos 30 plus cos 45 sine 30. Okay, so now all we need to do is have a look at our special angles and fit it in. So sine of 45, remember sine is, we're going to do Sarkatoa. And I'm just going to change color so you guys can work out what we're doing. Sine is opposite of our part in use. So we're looking at 45 degrees, right? So sine is opposite. This is the opposite. This is the hypotenuse. And this is the adjacent side. And sine is opposite of our part in use. So it's going to be 1 over root 2. Cos of 30, so we're looking at the angle of 30, and we're looking at angle 30, both of them, so we can just go, this is opposite, this is the adjacent, and this is the hypotenuse. So cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, therefore it is root 3 over 2. Okay, so that looks promising. Cos of 45 is adjacent of hypotenuse. Okay, it's not too bad, 1 over root 2 multiplied by sine of 30, which is opposite of our part in use, which is 1 over 2. 1 over 2. Okay, so do you agree that I have a common denominator of 2 root 2? Okay. 2 root 2. 1 times root 3 is just root 3, plus 1 times 1 is 1. Okay, so we've already got this part. Cha ching Life is looking very good. Now we somehow have to fix this to make it equal to 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rationalize the denominator. I'm going to multiply both the denominator and the numerator by root 2. Okay, if I do that, this cancels with this, and I end up with 2 multiplied by 2. And obviously, this is multiplied with the whole of that. So it's root 2 times by root 3 plus 1. And again, I'm getting excited because there's my root 2. And finally, I can say root 2, root 3 plus 1, 2 times 2 is 4, ta-da, there we go. So we've just proven that sine 75 is this year. Okay, and guys, this is an old exam paper question. So you can see that it's quite actually quite easy to do these questions if you just take it step by step and baby steps. Okay, right, now it says express tan of alpha plus beta in terms of sines and cosines. Now I have to tell you that the compound angle formula for tan used to be in the curriculum. It no longer is, but what they do is they get around it by asking this type of question, where they're asking you to express it in terms of sines and causes. They're asking you to work it out. Okay, so let's work it out. So do you agree that we know that tan of theta is sine theta all over cos theta? Do you agree? So do you agree that I can write this as sine of alpha plus beta all over cos of alpha plus beta? That's what this really is, okay? So now, we know that that can be written because we know our compound angles is sine of alpha cos of beta plus cos of beta sine of alpha all over cos of alpha plus beta is cos of alpha cos of beta minus sine of alpha sine of beta and that's it okay you can't really do anything else because they're very different very different okay there you go right now we're going to look at the double angle formula and the reason we teach the double angle formula with the compound angle formula is because the double angle formula is actually a special case of the compound angle formula so let's go through it okay so we're looking at sine 2a so sine to a is the same as writing sine of a plus a, right? But we know that the sine rule says sine of a plus b is sine of a cos of b minus, no, sorry, plus sine of b cos of a. Do you agree with that? Okay, all we do is flip them. 
So therefore, if this case is now AA, do you agree I've got sine of A, cos of A, plus cos of A, sine of A, which makes it very easy because that just means that there are two of them, so it becomes two sine A, cos A. So that is my first version of sine to A. Sine to A could be written as two sine A, cos A. And again, this is on your formula sheet, but they sometimes ask you to prove it. So again, what I'd like to say to you is, Try not to learn this. Try and work out how to do it. Because, again, last time I'm saying this, if you get in the middle of an exam paper and you're having a nervous breakdown, you suddenly can't remember how to do it because you memorized it and then you've gone blank on that, then you are um, totally messed up, okay? You can't get the marks. Whereas if you understand that you can separate sine 2a into sine of a plus a and then just use the rules that are on your formula sheet, you will come to the final answer, okay? Okay, so we've got that sine 2a is equal to 2 sine a cos a. Okay, cos 2a can be written as cos of a plus a, right? And again, we know that cos of a plus b would be written as cos a cos b minus sine a sine b, right? But now both of them are a, so it becomes cos a cos a minus sine a sine a, which is the same as cos squared a minus sine squared a, okay? But there's something special. We know that cos squared a plus sine squared a equals 1. So do you agree, therefore, I can say that 1 minus sine squared a equals cos squared a? Or I can say 1 minus cos squared a is equal to sine squared a. Works both ways, okay? So, like I've said, but cos squared a plus sine squared a equals 1. Therefore, we can say, now we're using this one. We can say that, well, in that case, cos 2a can be written as 1 minus sine squared a minus sine squared a, okay? Which is going to be 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Okay, easy peasy, right? Or I can go the other way. I can use this method, yeah, where I'm saying, well, sine squared a can be rewritten as 1 minus cos squared a. Okay, so then we end up with, well, let me write it out again. It becomes cos squared a minus 1, and then a minus times a minus is a plus cos squared a. And a cos squared a plus a cos squared a is 2 cos squared a minus 1. Ta-da! So therefore, we've got three formula for our cos 2a. We've got cos squared a minus sine squared a. We've got 2 cos squared a minus 1. And you've got 1 minus 2 sine squared a, okay? Whereas your sine 2a, you only have 2 sine a cos a, okay? So let's do an example. It says fully simplify. Sine of 90 plus x, sine of 180 minus x, cos minus cos of 180 plus x, cos of 90 minus x, tan of 360 minus 2x, and cos squared x minus sine squared x. Okay. Okay, so this is kind of a combination. It's kind of a combination of using our cost diagram and using our compound angles and double angles. So that's what we're going to do. So the first thing that we're going to do is write down sine of 90 plus x. Okay, so sine of 90 plus x is over here, so therefore it is in the second quadrant. Okay, and let's think about that. In fact, you know what I could do? I'm wondering if I should use co ratios for this and show you how to get that. Okay, let's leave sine of 90 minus x alone, sine of 90 minus plus x alone. And let me show you how to do this. Sine of 180 minus x is obviously in the second quadrant. So that just becomes sine of x. Okay. Cos minus cos of 180 plus x is in this fourth quadrant, right? I mean, third quadrant. And cos is negative here. So it becomes minus cos x. Okay, 
cos of 90 minus x, we're going to leave. Okay, cos of 90 minus x becomes sine of x because it's a co-ratio. Okay, co-ratio. Let me show you. Okay, pen. Sine of x. Okay, all over. Tan of 360 minus 2x. Okay. That is the same as just saying tan of 2x because all that we're doing is going around, well actually if you want to think of it this way, it's tan of negative 2x because this is minus 2x, minus 2x, and then we are going around 360 times. We're adding up, that would be 720. Let's go back one. Okay, right, so it's 360. So therefore this is the same as tan of minus 2x. Okay, we'll worry about that in a minute. And cos squared x minus sine squared x is what? We've just shown you that cos 2a can be written as cos squared a minus sine squared a, which is equal to 2 cos squared a minus 1, which is 1 minus 2 sine squared a. So do you agree that that there is the same as saying cos 2x. That there is the same as saying cos 2x. Hmm, nice question. Okay, so sine of 90 plus x is going to be a co-ratio of your cos x that's in this quadrant, which means it's negative. So it's minus cos x times by sine x, and minus times minus is plus cos x sine x, okay? all over sorry i'm just having a look at this okay all over actually sorry this is a positive i'm not going i'm going mad all over tan of negative 2x is negative tan 2x times by cos 2x so this becomes 2 sin x cos x do you agree all over minus tan 2x times cos 2x. I'm probably with this, okay? Right, now I need to write in red because I want to write on the side here. So 2 sin x cos x, do you agree that's the sign, same as saying sin 2a? So that's the same as saying sin 2a. All over, do you agree that tan can be broken up into minus, oh, sorry, x, 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 x minus sine 2x over cos 2x multiplied by cos 2x. So we can cancel these. How nice is that? And you end up with sine 2x over minus sine 2x. And these cancel and becomes minus 1. Sure. So that was a nice question because it included co-ratios, it included knowing your cast diagram, it included knowing your double angles. Okay, very nice question. Right, now let's look at this one. It says prove the identity that sine 2x plus over 1 plus cos 2x is equal to tan x. Now grade 12, it is very important that when they say prove the identity, that you cannot let them be equal and then show that they're equal afterwards because then you're using it, okay? So when you're seeing something like this, the minute you see this, you either have to choose a left-hand side or a right-hand side to work with. And you're going to work with it until you can't go any further, okay? If at that point it equals the right-hand side, awesome. If it doesn't, then you can go to the other side and play with it, okay? I'll show you what I mean. But let's go. I'm going to choose to play with the left-hand side because it looks like it's got much more to play with. I mean, the only thing I can do with tan x is write it as sin x over cos x, which doesn't really help me yet. So let's play with the left-hand side. So the left-hand side is sine 2x all over 1 plus cos 2x. Okay, so there is a kind of a trick that you need to use with this. I'm going to show you. First of all, let's change sine 2x, okay? Now, guys, remember, sine 2x is just 2 sine x cos x, whereas cos 2x can be one of three things. It can be cos squared x minus sine squared x, or it can be 2 cos squared x minus 1, 
or it can be 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So what I would like to say to you is ideally, ideally, it would be nice if you first changed your sine to x's, however many you have. In this case, we only have one, so it does make too much of a difference. We only have one, so what we're going to do is we're going to change this sine to x first, and then we're going to have a look at this and see if we can choose one of these that will, with the sine to x, give us a tan x, okay? So whenever you have a problem, whether it be something fairly easy like this one, or whether it be a more complicated one, you guys really need to do your sine to x first, okay? So this becomes 2 sine x cos x, all over 1 plus cos 2x, okay? And remember, what are we aiming for? We're aiming for sine x over cos x. So we somehow need to get rid of one of these, this cos x. Do you agree? So do you agree that cos 2x could be written as cos squared x minus sine squared x, or it could be written as 2 cos squared x minus 1, or it could be written as 1 minus 2 sine squared x? Okay, now I need to say to you that it doesn't matter which one you substitute in, it will eventually work out if you keep doing the steps. But I don't have a 1 in this denominator, so I'm going to choose the one in the middle that gets rid of this one. So I'm going to say, okay, this is 2 sine x cos x over 1 plus 2 cos squared x minus 1. Okay, that's just my reasoning. Like I said, you can, guys can do it any way you want as long as you get it right. So, and you use the right math principles. So we end up with 2 sine x cos x all over... 1 plus 2 cos squared x minus 1. So these cancel. So you end up with 2 sine x cos x over 2 cos squared x. Do you agree that these cancel? The squared cancels with one of these cos and you end up with sine x over cos x, which is the same as tan x, which equals the right-hand side. Yay! Wonderful. We got it right. Give me my marks, okay? So do you see how you could use your double angle formula here to prove an identity? And that's the type of question, all these questions actually come from old exam papers. Okay, again, simplify the following without the use of a calculator, and you'll see that this time we've got numbers, numbers. So we've got sine 150, tan 225, sine of 30, and sine of 420. So let's have a look at this. The first thing I'm going to do is draw a cast diagram. So we're all stations to Cape Town. And I may be using double angles. I may be using... Um, special angles because I'm seeing a 30 then it says without a try without a calculator so I'm going to get 60 30 2 1 root 3 and while we add it our models will do um, 45 45 1 1 root 2 and remember what I said to you guys I said when, when I did this last the trick last I said always the very first thing you do when you're doing trick section is you write down your special triangles and your cast diagram. Okay, so it says simplify the following without the use of a calculator. So do you agree that I can say that sine of 150 can be rewritten as 180 minus 30? Okay. Tan of 225 can be written as tan of 180 plus 45. Over sine of 30 is just sine of 30. We like that. Sine of 420. Hmm, what's 420 minus 360? Well, do you agree that that is 60 degrees? So this becomes sine of 360 plus 60 degrees. Okay, so then using a cost diagram, we can see that sine of 180 minus 30 is going to fall into the second quadrant. So therefore, this is just sine of 30. Tan of 180 plus 45 is going to be in the third quadrant, and tan is positive, so this is just tan of 45. Over sine of 30 just remains sine 30. 
And sine 360 plus 60 is basically saying we've got 60 degrees and we're going around 360 degrees. So it's the same as sine of 60. So you agree these cancel. Woof, woof. Okay. So what do we get? We get tan of 45. So now we need Sakatoa. Tan of 45 is opposite over adjacent, which is this one. Sine of 60 is opposite over hypotenuse. So it's root 3 over 2. But do you agree that's the same as saying 1 divided by root 3 over 2? And what do you do when you divide? When you divide, you tip and times. So you end up with 1 times 2 over root 3, which is just 2 over root 3. There you go. Guys, these are actually compound angles. That's why we do it like this, okay? But I just, they're special compound angles, which is why I've included it in this questionnaire. Okay, yeah, something a little bit more complicated again. It says prove the identity of the cos squared of 90 plus theta, all divided by cos of minus theta, sine of 90 minus theta, cos theta is equal to 1 over cos theta plus 1. Okay, so let's play with the left hand side again. So we're going to choose the left hand side. We've got cos squared 90 plus theta all over cos of minus theta. If I do this, all stations to Cape Town, minus theta is down here, so therefore this cos is positive, so it's cos of theta. Sine of 90 minus theta is a co-ratio of cos theta, so that's just cos theta times by cos theta, okay? So do you agree that that is cos squared 90 plus theta all over cos theta plus cos squared theta. Okay, so now I want to show you something. So instead of me just showing you what cos of 90 plus theta is, we're going to use the rule. We're going to say cos of a plus b is the same as cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. Okay, so if we do that, we're going to go cos of a is cos of 90 cos theta minus sine of 90 sine theta all squared all over cos of theta plus cos squared theta. Okay, now I don't know if you guys remember your graphs, but your cos graph starts up here and goes down there. And that there is a 90. So cos of 90 is 0. Cos of 90 is 0. So that there is 0. Sine of 90, your sine graph does this. So the sine of 90 is 1. So that is written as 1. So do you agree that I can write this as 0 times cos theta is just 0. So it becomes 0 minus sine theta all squared all over and let's take out a common factor of cos theta cos theta and we're left with one plus cos theta so do you agree that this is going to become sine squared theta all over cos theta times by one plus cos theta okay Everybody happy with that because that becomes sine squared, it becomes sine squared 1 cos theta times 1 plus cos theta. Okay, so now this one here, we've now got as far as sine squared theta, cos theta 1 plus cos theta. Okay, do you agree that I can't somehow see where to go next? I'm a little bit befuddled as to what I could do. But what happens if I started playing with this side? And this side, I've got 1 over cos theta minus 1. So do you agree that's the same as over 1? So I could rewrite this as common denominator of cos theta. Okay. And then what? Do you agree that this becomes 1 minus cos theta? Now, is there a way, grade 12, that I could convert this 
into something like that. Right, now grade 12, what I'm going to do is, since it's the end of our lesson, I'm going to challenge you to work this out for yourselves. And then tomorrow, I'm going to come back and do this question and show you how to do it for final. Okay, so try that for yourselves and see if you get it right. Have a great day.